The Human Connect Home project has collected data of hundreds of individuals, ranging from brain imaging to genetic and lifestyle information. Now, researchers from the University of Oxford have used this information to see how much our lifestyle choices and personality traits are reflected in our brains. Dr Carla Miller explained her findings. In comparing the lifestyle factors and cognitive tests to the brain imaging data, what we found is that there really was a single sort of dominant mode, if you will, um, that was common across the two data sets. The main thing that we found in this uh, variation that was really interesting and, and actually really surprising was that there was sort of a simple axis of positive versus negative traits. So in other words, we, we found that if you looked at the, the traits that seemed to be driving this variation across different individuals, they included positive traits such as life satisfaction, good cognitive abilities, high socioeconomic status. And then on the other end of that axis, there would be negative traits, including things like substance abuse, aggression, psychiatric illness. So you found that someone who had one positive trait tended to have other positive traits as well? Yeah, exactly. And then what we found was that on the other side, on the other data set, um, the brain imaging data, that that same pattern emerged from a set of connections in the brain, so connections from one brain region to another. And what that really suggests is that this axis of sort of positive versus negative traits combines across many aspects of an individual's life experiences and abilities is imprinted in the brain. And so broadly, if people uh, lay higher up in this, this positive versus negative traits axis, they also tended to have stronger connectivity across a subset of regions of the brain. So what does it mean that these regions are involved and that the regions of the brain are seen at the same time as these positive traits? Right. That's a, that's a really tough question. I, I guess partly what you're getting at here is whether, for example, this might provide some kind of a, a roadmap to improving an individual's cognition. I think we start to get into some very complex relationships here. So, for example, the years of education that an individual might have could be related to uh, the strength of connections because increased education trains you, it improves those connections. But it could also be that an individual who is born with stronger connections in certain regions of the brain is more likely to pursue education. So establishing an underlying meaning, as you say, is really quite a difficult thing to do with this kind of a study. To see which way round it's going and what's affecting what, could you upregulate connections in the brain, maybe pharmaceutically or through overstimulation, and then see how that affects lifestyle traits? Yeah, absolutely. So what you're describing there is is essentially an interventional study, which would be aimed specifically at getting at these questions of causation. And so there, um, you know, there's kind of two ways that you could go about doing that. One would be to train subjects up to be better at certain cognitive tests um, and then look to see if, if their connections have changed. And that's the route that most studies along those lines have taken to date. But the other very intriguing route would be to do it the other way around, to see if somehow you could train subjects to upregulate their connectivity and then look to see how that um, has a knock-on effect, if any, on their behaviour or cognitive abilities. We're starting to get into the very philosophical questions of life, of how life chances and genetic determinism and everything links up. And once you get into that, it's quite, I imagine, ethically complicated area to be in. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. One of the Im important points to take away from this study is not necessarily that all of human experience um, and, and human sort of fitness can be laid out on a single axis. You know, our brains are really what make us human. They give us the ability to interact with the world and each other in a really complex way. It would be remarkable if that sort of full um, richness of human capabilities were in any sense one dimensional. What we sort of suspect from this study is that a lot of the richness that enables us as humans to do the, the sort of full you know, range of things that we're capable of is probably more in the subtle features of this data, some of which will probably emerge as we start to get access to this full data set. So we're only about a third of the way into data collection. Uh, and we've only analyzed one particular type of brain imaging data from this. So hopefully um, in the future with this data set and others like it, we'll be able to pull out a much more multidimensional a description of, of how these kind of subject traits map onto the brain.